Hi everyone, thank you for dialing in. My name is Mick and I'll be talking about the trials and tribulations of CI for the Apache Cassandra project and running it on Apache Infra. I'll be talking for 30 minutes, maybe a little bit less, um, and there'll be time for Q and A's afterwards. I'm going to be focusing on the experiences and the practical stuff that the project has gone through in the past few years. I won't be covering, covering any groundbreaking, exciting new ideas. If you want that, then I'd recommend Alex's talk or Benedict's talk after me. Rather, I want to introduce how things have been set up, how we use them, why they are the way they are, what works and, and what doesn't. The audience that I have in mind for this talk is Cassandra contributors looking to get involved and understand more of the community flow. Committers to other Apache projects who may be interested to see how, how the Cassandra project is doing things. And of course, Cassandra users, because what we're doing here is uh, all about making the technology safe, and trustable and stable, which I, I hope you want to hear. Before I go any further, uh, a little bit about myself, that mandatory, awkward um, section of every presentation. I've been working with Cassandra the past 10 years, and I've been a committer for the past five years. I never cared or... Um, and I never cared or looked into databases throughout university and my early career. They were, I thought, boring and just done wrong until I got involved with Cassandra back when I was at fin.no. That's when I realized that I saw the importance of, of a fast, scalable, distributed database in your application stack. Since then, um, and with many thanks to Aaron Morton and Nate McCall, I was consulting um, at the last pickle and, and now with Datastacks. Uh, so I've been consulting for the last six years, helping people out with their Cassandra clusters. And I've worked with many hundreds of clusters out in the wild of all shapes and sizes. The breakdown of this talk, um, kind of roughly six sections, uh, how Cassandra 4.0 has changed our CI needs. Um, its importance to the community, the tests that we have, how they're set up in different CI systems, and then a longer run through of, of all of the challenges that we've had along the way, and then some of the extras that we've tacked on um, to deal with those challenges. So Cassandra 4.0 did change the game for us. Uh, Cassandra is now a tech that we could consider early majority. And so then stability and reliability become more and more crucial for its reputation. But also, as a community, we've gone from having predominantly one company driving the, the, the community and the technology to now having... Uh, many more companies and stakeholders involved. And that needs a lot more coordination and collaboration and, and, and trust establishment amongst all of us. Um, and, and we're talking about uh, Apple and Netflix and Amazon and Bloomberg and Alibaba and Dynatrace and Weiwei and Instacluster and Datastacks. It makes it a much more enjoyable community to work in that also requires more of us uh, to make it a successful community. Stealing a graphic from a data stacks blog post, 
you can see the effort and focus that 40 put into quality assurance. This started a number of years ago at Apache Con and NGCC, um, and it eventually added into a long feature freeze, probably lasted too long. Um, but the project got strict, and you can see it in the numbers here that have paid off. And we've also gone and marked a number of existing features as experimental, where time has taught us that they don't meet our quality expectations. So yeah, sure, it's great to have a stable product, and it's great to have heavy users in the community that are pushing quality and stability is paramount over, for example, vendors that want to push for excitement and momentum. But I think that there's something much more important here, and it comes back to ASF's slogan of community over code. A well-functioning and healthy CI system makes for a more harmonious and pleasant community. And then the more that the CI system is available to, to new contributors, the easier it is for that community to be warm and inclusive. The ISF bangs on about lowering the bar for committership for the sake of project longevity. But I'd rather think about it as enabling and raising contributors up so that they can more easily meet the required bar of the project. Moving on to the testing that we have in Cassandra. So testing distributed tech is hard. We all know that. And Cassandra is a technology, a database that at the best of times, misuse and abuse manifests in the server and it remains the obvious blame target. You introduce all of the configuration variables, all the different data models and traffic possibilities, all the different deployment types, and it becomes difficult to provide absolute assurances. Just in the OSS project, just in Apache Cassandra, we run over 40,000 tests on every commit that's pushed. These tests can be roughly categorized into four categories. We have uh, unit tests, like proper unit tests, and, and unit tests that have like a single embedded Cassandra node of sorts. We have uh, Java distributed tests, and we have Python distributed tests. The, the Python distributed tests came first, and the Java distributed tests came later. The Python distributed tests, they run in CCM um, to run multiple nodes, and the Java distributed tests run Cassandra nodes inside class loaders. The JVM tests being able to validate and verify directly in the code makes uh, the, the tests faster, um, to complete and to time out. We've also introduced other tests in the project around packaging, for example, so that uh, when a release manager goes to cut a release, they don't uh, get surprised by um, something not working there. If you go into CI Cassandra, and uh, cicassandra.apache.org and you go to one of the tabs for one of our release branches you can see all of the different test types that we have the first row in this screenshot is the pipeline and then underneath that is all of the different inner jobs there's also here additional jobs and, and variants that we don't include in the pipeline for example arm um, jobs aren't yet included in the pipeline. And there's also microbench JMH test, um, test run set too. For CI, 
systems at Cassandra. We we basically just use two systems, Circle CI and CI Cassandra. Circle CI is a commercial solution and it's used only for pre-commit. CI Cassandra is our community ASF infra and third-party donated hardware CI that predominantly does post-commit CI, but it can also do pre-commit for those that don't have access to Circle CI. Having to use two systems can be frustrating at times, but it's also been invaluable to catch errors um, in each system through double accounting, so to speak. CI Cassandra at Apache.org is based on CloudBees. It's provided by the ASF and uh, we have our own um, ASF master running and hooked up to that is 50 agents or donated hardware by different companies. The pipelines on each of our, for, we have a pipeline for each of our release branch and they run automatically uh, when you push a commit. And for the first time in many years, on the lead up to 4.0, we started to see green runs. We are still working on a small handful of flaky tests to make green runs more than norm. Um, but that is, it is a priority, so we're still thrashing away on it and lots of praise and credits. And if you ever meet any of them that are working on it, please buy them a beer from all of us because it's a very tireless work. And of course, off CI Cassandra, we've got the mailing list notifications and the Slack notifications for every build. Circle CI is the commercial solution. You require your employee and your employer to um, with you to give you a access to a premium account with um, access to hundreds of containers for it to be usable with Cassandra. There are lots of stages to this CI and here developers, they just trigger off those stages that they feel are relevant to test for the patch they're working on. A simple view of those stages may look like this, but in fact, it looks like this. So jumping into the challenges that we've faced, I said it before, testing distributed tech is wild. Really, it is. Anyone who's trying to run the Python upgrade tests on their own machine knows this pain. Uh, it shouldn't be that difficult but it is. Uh, we're all just volunteers um, most of the time in the project, especially for some of this stuff on the edge. Making all of this run on donated heterogeneous hardware around the world and on a Jenkins system that itself has no CI systems when you want to deploy changes, how it's run, set up and deployed, um, it, it uh, Never, it's never going to run the same locally on your own laptop if you try and copy it. Um, and even if you do run a, a copy uh, of Jenkins locally, you don't have the capacity uh, to match and to test the, what's running on CI Cassandra. So it, this stuff is quite clumsy. Um, it's not complicated, but it's it's still difficult. So as I go through the challenges, I'm going to go from the, the code level and go through the different challenges uh, that we've had over time um, going up as we move away from the code. <laughs> so in the code, the Cassandra code base, it it suffers. I don't think there's any other way to put it. It suffers from a lot of singletons and static uh, code that makes it very difficult to test at times. We, as a distributed tech, um, you know, we're quite reliant on clocks and timestamps 
and that can make testing uh, clumsy. And of course, Cassandra has a stage event driven architecture, concurrency, parallelism. Um, it brings its own challenges. The code base also has a lack of modularization. It's client side tools. Um, everything is just in the same uh, Java folder in the project. Running the tests are also a lot more complicated than a lot of other projects. It isn't just a matter of running Maven or Ant or Gradle. We have build scripts. The build scripts are a bit different for CI, Cassandra, and for Circle CI. Um, and then, you know, on top of that, like if you want to test different JDKs or different architectures, uh, it, it becomes harder. I think a number of those build scripts won't even work on Mac OS. Um, and then we've got the Debian and the Red Hat and the Docker packaging all on top of that. Taking a step up, looking at Cassandra as just a technology. Testing uh, the technology that Cassandra is requires resources that really aren't ever going to exist um, on a, an open source project. Uh, companies are doing a lot more testing of Cassandra behind closed doors with more resources. Uh, and we do have a lot of donated hardware available. Um, and, and companies which have a premium access to Circle CI can share those results back into the community. Um, but it is a challenge that we face that, that to, to really put Cassandra through a proper amount of testing it just requires a lot. It's also uh, tech that just has a lot of variables and possible deployments to it where the pain is always going to manifest in the database. Examples of that, V nodes versus non-V nodes, off-heap versus on-heap mem tables, CDC, where the right path changes, compressions, the different types of compressions, upgrade tests, and like which upgrade paths do we test? Do we test all of the different patch versions uh, that users can, can do out in the wild? How many nodes, what size clusters do we test on over what periods of time? And then you've got kernels and file systems and JDKs, and then the data model and the traffic shapes. Property-based testing uh, can help towards some of that as uh, Alex and Benedict have been involved in the fuzz testing um, to help with validation and replication. In 4.0, we also saw diagnostic events introduced in the code base, which can help you with trapping and pausing execution. Um, we haven't seen a lot of tests being written for that yet, but it is there. And we're also seeing, moving forward, a proposal to land code and cluster simulations, which will make a lot of things possible. Taking another step up to our testing and our methodology, one of the challenges that we have is how to easily compare pre-commit CI results to our canical release branch results. Uh, if you're using Circle CI and you're comparing that to uh, CI Cassandra, it's a bit clumsy. This gets even more clumsy when you're trying to identify uh, what's, what's noise or what's flakies. Then it's uh, how do we uh, work with flakies? How do we identify them? Um, how, if you're going to uh, run them in a loop or in parallel, do you are you just stealing um, all available testing capacity or running it slowly and just waiting days or even weeks? We have seen flakies be one in 100, one in 200 failures. Um, on the Jenkins side, there's problems, there's, there's challenges with, we have the inner stage jobs defined by Groovy DSL, and then those pipelines defined by declarative Jenkins files. When you run those pipelines, it is a bit clumsy to connect the dots between the pipeline and the, the actual inner job run that ran. Um, there's setting up the ARM test builds, 
all of our test runs run in a Cassandra Docker image that, that we build and deploy to Docker Hub. When we started to introduce ARM, uh, no one really in the community had access, uh, at least that was working with testing, had access to ARM machine to, to deploy such an image. For that, we solved that by using Docker Build X to build Moria Docker testing images. Um, and there's also the question here of you know, which test do I actually have to run um, pre-commit? And I don't think that's an answer really many of the committers can answer. It's, it's, it's a bit complicated. And I know that many, many times I've been tripped up um, thinking that I've done enough testing before doing a merge on something quite simple and it's still turned around and bitten me. And also what does stable trunk mean? For us, as we move forward, the community has agreed to, to move towards a stable trunk uh, mode of development. By definition, that means that all testing that is done post-commit is done pre-commit before a merge. Uh, for Cassandra, that's kind of unrealistic. So I think moving forward, the Cassandra community is going to need to, to, to face that question and find a definition for ourselves what stable trunk in practice means. Moving up to the CI systems level, um, passing JUnit reports. The XML parser, it can't handle anything more than 10 megs. And this is a problem for uh, Circle CI. So you, you can't get aggregated test results there. And if you want to do custom uh, aggregated test results, you, you can't do it um, elsewhere as well. Jenkins, for, fortunately, um, can uh, does it a different way. It reads each individual test report and puts it together. Committers can be concerned if they're hooked up to a Circle CI premium account that um, every time they push a commit, um, they're, they're kicking off tests without realizing it and burning down company expenses. Um, and, and, you know, that can cause some anguish. Um, if, you know, that's been going on, you're not paying attention to it, or, you know, you're working on a different repository that you don't want to thrash your Circle CI on. Also with Circle CI, we have to make these custom throwaway commits uh, to change it from the, the, the default low profile Circle CI to the high profile. And then we have to remember to remove them when we merge. So it makes our Git merging process um, not complex, but just it's an extra step that's that's frustrating and annoying. And again, the comparing the two different CI systems and getting people to trust the two different CI systems and the differences between those. Uh, for example, the way Circle CI and the way Jenkins splits. Uh, D test runs is quite different. Um, so, you know, that, that will change things like noisy neighbors effect and, and other things. Taking a step up to the AF, ASF infra level and the problems with donated hardware, the agents, when they're plugged into the CloudBees master that ASF provides, um, once ASF runs, once Infra runs their puppet scripts on those donated hardware, uh, we lose all SSH access to those boxes. So they become just black boxes. And they're not just black boxes. They're all donated hardware in different places of the world. They're heterogeneous. Um, and so that makes the, 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 the setup we have to make the all of that Jenkins stuff uh, much more forgiving um, to the environment that it has to run on. Those agents they can they can hang, and the the, the Docker demons on them have also been seen to hang. Then we have to um, we can ask Infra sometimes to try and uh, soft, re soft restart it. Otherwise, sometimes we've had to go back to the company that's donated the box and ask them to do a, uh, a full reboot of the machine. We've also hit problems with Docker rate limits. 
and because of that all of our tests they they do a docker login um, just to a dummy uh, docker hub account that we created for the project just so it can increase the the rate limit so it can pull those docker testing images that i mentioned before we have a problem with no, noisy neighbors one of the things we did there was we added the jenkins plugins so that there's a timestamp on every log and console line um, and when there's a crash it's often worth it's often worth looking at the history for that agent when um, a job was running at the same time and go look at the other jobs timestamps and make that comparison um, one crash can bring down everything on the machine or too easily or you can see like a saturation point and it kills the other job disks filling up is a real problem we've gotten on top of that just with with scripts when the job starts when the job's finished they do a little bit of cleanup um, that seems to be working well enough now that even when an agent automatically goes offline because its disks get too full um, or for example the docker agent stops responding uh, they seem to clean themselves up and after a period of time come back online automatically and successfully run again. Um, I haven't had to turn off an agent or uh, turn back on an agent in many months now. So that's looking positive. Also trying to determine the appropriate utilization um, throughput and timeouts on these agents is really hard work, especially because they're black boxes. Um, and um, uh, Brandon, I'm still talking on the ASAP Infra slides. So I don't think, I think I've, I just haven't progressed the slides. Uh, so finding the correct th uh, capacity throughputs, Docker limits and, and other things has been challenging one of the things that has been really useful here was plugging in the java melody monitoring but asf info doesn't give access to that for everyone so so that's been quite a challenging aspect another challenge is the asf infra doesn't yet support arm servers uh, in their puppet scripts and lastly like I mentioned before, when you're making changes to CI, we have no CI system for that itself. Um, and time and time again, I've made a change, I've tested it locally. Um, I've even kind of created copy jobs that they still run once you deploy them um, on, on the saturated system. Lastly, there's the human factor to all of it getting people to care about ci and that has a lot to do with getting our trust established on the ci I certainly felt um there certainly wasn't a lot of trust in it a couple of years ago when there was just lots of broken tests and i still don't think that people are really paying much attention to the pre-40 release branches where there's still a number of broken tests and those they're, they're probably breaking more unfortunately i think it's something we should get on top of we've also got the problem that everyone has their own favorite ci system um you know some people don't aren't always diligent enough to check both systems i know that i'm to blame for that at times and that's not because jenkins is my favorite uh and just the time it takes for those pipeline pipelines to run it's easy to forget to come back hours or day later and check what you committed is actually okay and um, if you're on the other side of that you've seen someone else has bro broken a test not to get into that blame game um, it has an impact on the on the community and also the hygiene around that of when you see broken tests uh, going in and logging a JIRA ticket. Josh McKenzie um, fixed that for us on the dev mailing list recently to, to, to put a process in place for, actually, for us to actually be a little bit more regiment about creating JIRA tickets uh, as soon as we see them. 
One of the services that the ASF, instru ASF Infra provides and isn't being used by a lot of projects is nightlies.apache.org. A number of problem, a number of the problems that we faced uh, has been solved um, by taking advantage of nightlies, particularly uh, around the cloud bees master having a limited history and storage to it. Um, for example, one of the things we've done is that each um, build in CI Cassandra is configured to compress and upload all of its test results and log files. This has made figuring out some of the more complicated failures for the D-tests a lot easier, um, particularly the flakies where, you know, you've got to go, like if, if, if the flaky was one in a hundred, you're never going to um, get results from more than one failure um, through the Jenkins system. So Nightly's has come to the rescue on that front. Aside from CI, we're also using Nightly's for st storing um, uh, the results of Nightly generated contributor statistics that we're trialing out. So these statistics are generated by a job in CI Cassandra, and they're just taking advantage of a precedence we have in the way the project writes its commit messages. So this, over different periods of time, we're able to identify um, who are our active contributors. The efforts for stabilization for 4.0 have been pretty immense. Um, it's involved lots of work. Um, and so there's lots of praise and credit that needs to be handed out. First up, those 50 donated servers, they're decent spec servers, like 16 CPU, 32 gig RAMs. They come from um, a number of different companies here. For having a community uh, CI system, one that can, can I, one that can give us mechanical results or the post commit results, this has been table stakes for us. So we, we couldn't have done it without the help from, from these companies. And there's also been many people involved. I hope I haven't forgotten any names or the people that deserve praise and credit on this slide, but I probably have, and I apologize. Uh, it takes a village to raise a child, and that's definitely true uh, here as well. Looking forward with the, the 4.0 feature freeze lifted, we are seeing lots of new momentum in Cassandra, really excited about it. Um, I know lots of people are really excited about what they're now seeing um, around Cassandra. We're seeing um, a lot of talk around uh, plugability, developer experience and safety. So that, that, that game plugs into our, our ability to maintain good quality assurance. Um, if you want to see more of what we're doing, jump into the Cassandra Enhancement Proposal Confluence page that we have. Uh, we've created a, a CEP system now in the project. And if you go through the list that we've got at the moment, you see a number of them are related to testing. Um, and, you know, we're also talking about bringing drivers in. Those drivers will have their own integration tests. And there's also things like fallout from data stacks for testing larger clusters and, and Harry for fuzz testing and the verification. Um, so all this stuff is going to evolve more and more over the time. And we're also trying to aim for that shippable trunk, whatever uh, that is for us. So there's more challenges to come. That wraps it up for me. I took longer. <laughs> If anyone's got any questions, throw them in the Slack channel and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you, everyone. So, Brandon, I'm expecting at least one question from you, please.
All good? No questions? I hope you've enjoyed the talk. Um, if you do think of any questions, just uh, reach out to me on the ASF Slack or on the dev mailing list, or you can use my Apache email address. I'll be happy to help out. Thank you.